iPad. So hey guys. So I don't know if I'm live here right now and if you could see me. Okay, I think I am. So essentially I said uh I said I was gonna go live at 7.30 but I just decided to log on a little bit earlier to see just to build up our audience see if I could get you guys to log in a little earlier um there is a good bit to discuss so what's up how are you guys doing hey Shanice what's up hey Peter what's up So I just thought I'd log in, see how you guys are going before I started getting into what it is I wanted to talk about here, being the crime situation in Trinidad and why exactly are we tolerating this as a people? Hey Darian, what's up? Um, so again, what are your views on our crime situation? What do you think we can do to change it and why are we tolerating all these things are uh, in our country. Like, what do you think? What do you think a state of emergency really can make a difference in China? Like, because we had a state of emergency before, do you think it's really an, uh, a solution or do you think it's just a band aid on the problem? I really want to get, you know, the general public view on what they think. What do you think can work or cannot work? Before I start getting into what my opinion is, you know. So hey Soraya, what do you think what do you think we can do to solve this crime this crime problem in Trinidad? What do you think Manisha? What do you think we can do? Because there's so many things that we can do and there's so many things that we're not doing and I'm hearing a lot of citizens and a lot of people jumping up and being like, okay, you know, I'm frustrated, I'm frustrated, um, we're fed up, we don't want to do anything. But at the same time, uh, I launched a petition recently online of which through a thousand and something views of the petition, we got like 72 signatures on the petition. And that was actually to remove the Minister of National Security. So what I want to know exactly is... Okay, yeah, you know, everyone's fed up and everyone's afraid and, and worried about what's going to go, what's happening in the country. But what is it that you really want to do? Like, I'm not, I'm hearing people, okay, I'm frustrated, I'm fed up, but I'm not seeing people doing anything. Yeah, I agree, uh, Darian, state of emergency, uh, emergency is just a band-aid and it isn't going to fix anything. But I'm seeing a lot of people, yes, yeah, state of emergency, state of emergency, and a lot of people are actually applauding the Minister of National Security for siding with our state of emergency, and I'm absolutely appalled by it. Why, as a Minister of National Security, would you want to invoke a state of emergency? That is the lowest, in my opinion, the absolutely last thing that you would do before giving up on, on your country, and that's, and that's exactly it. No one wants to live in a state of emergency, albeit for a couple, a couple days or a couple of weeks. But that it really isn't going to do anything. So, for everyone else who's tuning in, what do you think that we can do to fix this crime situation? Uh, what are you doing as citizens to fix this crime situation? Besides belly aching, bitching and moaning about things that isn't gonna change. So, what do you intend to do as people? To make a difference yeah I agree Darian is just gonna change a shift change our schedules is like you know okay I'm not gonna murder any night anymore I'm gonna murder during the day and night or day we all know that it really isn't stopping the rogue elements from coming out to to do their to do their um to do their deeds and it's actually very frustrating so what do you guys all of you guys are logging in Hey Crystal, hey Alicia, what do you think we can do to fix the crime situation? I have legit a notepad of list that I'm of like of ideas that we're gonna get into and things that can be done immediately, not things that are gonna take a year to implement, not things that are gonna take you know, that's gonna carry us to the moon and back. No, these are plans that we can do instantaneously 
to fix our crime situation and I'm I'm sorry but this is the only way I can make a difference and probably give those who can't do something the the idea of what to do or how to do it or if you don't want to do it I'll do it for you hell like I'll do it for free it, it really isn't about getting paid to do stuff anymore it's about just getting shit done and I think a lot of Trinidadians lack this like that drive just to get the job done they, you want to consider oh i'm not getting paid to do this so i'm not going to do it no take our interest in your country for once yeah. so what do you guys think that we can really do to make a difference um i got some comments earlier Alright, so what's our problems in terms of national security? We have the crime rate, we have our drug and turf wars, and we have our real main areas of national security. There are selective counselors in each area. Yes, I, I agree there are counselors in each area, but uh, Sheena, I think a lot of issue with regards to crime and whatnot, these counselors cannot really just, you know, just decide well okay i'm gonna fix this on my own this has to come from our protective services and it has to come from or this has to come from the minister of national security um if it if i if, if this information is correct i do believe that police officers yes okay we have a million on re reasons why we bash them etc but a lot of officers actually try to do the right thing i would like to do the right thing the difference is a lot of officers and uh, most officers actually have the order to arrest and detain and their complaints is and a lot of them voice these complaints to me personally already already their complaint is how can you arrest and detain individuals that are shooting at you from miles away with high power rifles how are you going to arrest and detain these individuals why do you want to arrest and detain these individuals it, it doesn't to me it doesn't make any sense uh, no the officers need through the chain of command need to follow protocol and i i understand that but why aren't these protocols being enforced and implemented it, it is nonsensical at this point in time if you want to detain someone who can shoot you before you even reach in viewing distance of them so all right i'm just gonna get into it a little bit touch on a couple issues you know you guys feel free to voice your opinions um with the state of emergency the last state of emergency i believe was held in 2011 and a lot of people saw it as a success no a state of emergency is never a success Let, let's just start with that a state of emergency is when you have nothing else that you can do um let me just log into my facebook on my laptop here so i can see your guys comments because I really can't keep up with it on my phone. So yes. Um, let's see. Yes, uh, Tikisha, the commissioner of police still acting and remove the. Again, you see the the level of corruption and the like, the level of back and all we have going on with the appointment of a. Uh, uh, commissioner of police and the top cop and, and all this foolishness like we are arguing and debating nonsensical issues and totally neglecting the running of our country and what is actually going on at hand right yes exactly Aaron. we haven't had a commissioner since 2012 we're in 2018 2018 is almost in we are almost in the middle of 2018 which means it's almost over so you're telling me for six years we are just on autopilot that would explain why the crime situation is where it is right now we have no proper leadership we have no vision we have no goal now with regards to the state of emergency i see that actually being very irrelevant one two a panic response in times of desperation because quite frankly i choose not to bash really but highlight what i see as a problem and if we have no serious crime plan we have no serious mission and vision we have no plan of or how to implement things how exactly are we going to effect changes 
we cannot effect changes on oh well i wish i did this you know and oh, i wish i did that no we need pen to paper and on pen to paper we need actions being followed and we need it yesterday we need it like last month we need it at the beginning of the year um we have u.s planes on our airstrips we have u.s boats in our harbors so i it is an assumption of mine that okay maybe we are doing joint efforts with the u.s in to target our our um our crime in our, in our country not as just an assumption they could be here for various number of reasons but where's the work if the ministry of national security is so confident and the minister issued a statement saying that he is unaware of rival gang wars that has been going on in the country where is the work being done all i am seeing is roadworks being done one thing i am seeing is roadworks being done but i'm not seeing anything else what is the ministry of national security actually doing because i read an article recently i believe it was from the express and they reported it that the police told now quote me it could be the express or newsday the police told the reporters that one group in the central area was planning to have a war with another group in the same area and but they were waiting for a religious holiday to pass now i didn't realize the police the police reporting i didn't realize that they protected and serving by providing information they're not actually out there doing what they're supposed to do you provided information to reporters about a war that you know is going to happen and what are you doing to prevent the war nothing not doing anything to prevent the war well Shanice you're right the government keeps talking about a crime plan right the crime plan is blame Kamala and blame the previous administration and this and, and this is not going to be a political view or anything like this but every government whether it be PNM, UNC, COP, NJAC, NER, Rainbow, Unity whatever it was every government blamed the previous governments for the situation that we're in how long are you going to play the blame game? The country is on the verge of a crippling economy, regardless what the Minister of Finance says. We're on the verge of a crippling economy. Businesses are closing down. Workers are being laid off. Crime is rampant. Our borders are being penetrated by foreign immigrants, which is a debatable issue. And what are we going to do? Blame the partnership. Blame the PNM. No, somebody needs to take responsibility and start saying, okay, listen, whoever to blame, to blame, but we need to fix it. We need to actually get in there, roll our sleeves up, and as men and women of the country, fix it. No, it had this big recommendation about joint patrols with the army and police, and all I saw all over Facebook was, oh, um, the army not trained to deal with people and the army this and the army that why are we wasting taxpayers dollars to let the army shoot millions of rounds somewhere in the bush and practice for what the next invasion venezuela done invading we are nobody stopping it so what they're practicing for put them to work our army are trained individually yes they may not be people friendly but what do you prefer you prefer to be safe or you prefer to to be afraid and, and worried about your children, your wives, your family, your friends? Or do you want to be safe? Why why are we not having joint patrols and how hard it is to merge the army and the police service to get patrols going out there? Why is it that we have all these people sitting down talking in parliament but nobody cares to say, well, let's actually do something for once? You're right new police vehicles now let me ask you a question right before we get into police vehicles why it is ministry of legal aid and affairs or whatever the ministry official name is driving around in prados right a prado is half a million dollars you telling me you can buy five almira five not even five used almira five brand new almira for five hundred thousand dollars and have five times the amount instead of one what are you doing with our Prado? And this is going for every single government ministry across the board. Why is it that we have secretaries 
delivery people and all these other individuals driving around in brand and in vehicles like this this is a service or the government supposed to be a service oriented industry not a user anyways i'll get back to my point at hand any individual that is bearing arms against the state should be treated as a hostile and dealt with accordingly i am sorry but if as a reasonable person i am walking down the street and i am confronted by a member of the protective services then i would say okay fine you know yes officer all right whatever whatever uh what you arrest me with etc i am not going to pull a knife i am not going to pull a gun and say listen and have a big confrontation no anyone who opposes the state should be treated as a threat against the state no questions asked and foreign nationals especially that are involved in these criminal activities or terrorist activities in Trinidad should be deported immediately no questions asked I'm not even going to send you to a trial to say I said trial and okay um you was this and that and these excuse for it I don't want to hear no excuses you're a foreign national and you're involved in rogue elements in our country you're getting the hell out you're not going to stick around for this because we're not putting up for that we need to start taking care of our country and of our people first now a, a lot of people in the plan to fight crime well my plan anyway uh neglect the prison system now you hear prison officers complain all the time any you know anyone who works in the prisons you hear them complain all the time about working conditions and this and that and the other i'm sorry prisons will no longer be a hotel in Trinidad. you know like criminals are not going to be able to go to prison because they don't have a house to sleep on the road uh, they don't have a house to sleep in and they're gonna commit a crime to go back in because they're getting fed breakfast lunch and dinner that is not how prisons supposed to be you know absolutely no luxuries should be afforded to two career criminals to serious offenders no luxury whatsoever you're not going to have no tv you're not going to have no play no recreation time you're not going to have none of that this you're in prison because you're a career criminal then you you gave up your rights the moment you pull that trigger maliciously to kill another individual you are giving up your rights as a human and your human right to, to be entitled to anything and I am sorry and whoever disagrees the rights of the few must be infringed for the rights of the many and I am sorry if you are a career criminal and you are uh, and you are killing people out there in uh, related to gang violence and these things you I do not consider you hum human you cannot be human that is monstrosity yes i agree we have ministries renting properties for hundreds of dollars but and that is also a crime but well, it should be a crime but i i, I actually want to deal with with the actual crime rate and the murders has been going on every day i've been seeing so many murders and shootings and innocent people being gunned down killed and a lot of people is reaching close to home for them so now they're getting worried they're getting worried now that shit you know it's my cousin it's my uncle it's my brother it's my mother it, only when people relate to it is when shit started to get real because yeah you hear somebody random get, sh get gone down not really not about anybody any day so prisons need to be reformed no more wasting taxpayers dollars breads we again the army is the most integral part of this plan we are paying our members of the army they are going to be in the prisons they are going to help our prison officers and i am sorry again for those who say they're not trained i don't care if they're trained you're in prison for a reason so if you don't want to be there don't do the crime you don't do the time but you're there so deal with your consequences Prison should have manual labor being implemented. You will work and you will get well, I wouldn't even pay it to be honest, you will work as part of a regimented routine. Because I'm not wasting money to pay you who went into prison as a career criminal. And I am not educating career criminals. Why? As as a 
as a career criminal who has killed murder and murder people in cold blood must I spend hard earned taxpayer dollars to send you to school to what to learn how to get away with being a criminal or to be a smarter criminal I, I am sorry that makes absolutely no sense to me I am not educating career criminals I am sorry you're gonna be subjected to manual labor we're going to have prison reform programs we're going to use these same prisoners in these manual labors to help we always need help to do to do something and you know what we can it done for free <sighs> anyways another part to dealing with crime besides not having a state of emergency besides prisons is the judiciary tell me why our courts cannot run 24 hours a day seven days a week we have the enough we have an overflow of attorneys in trinidad and tobago we more than have attorneys to represent people we can appoint more judges we can have night court and sentencing and not this issue where i can't remember what's her name broke out broke out from jail or through some ex extreme plan or whatever i mean it was humorous but it's actually very serious how how ineffective and stupid are our systems for somebody to be able to do that Yes, poverty has a lot to do with crime, but of recent day, these crimes, from what I've seen, yes, it is hinged on poverty, but is also hinged on lawlessness. And poverty and lawlessness does not always go hand in hand. Lawlessness is a different breed. Lawlessness is something that is ingrained into, into individuals. Because a man is poor doesn't mean he will turn to crime. A poor man, an honest poor man, will find a way to make a dollar he will find a way to make ends meet and i am telling you i've seen some poor people worked some serious jobs to just put a plate of food on the table for their family so i cannot directly relate poverty to, to crime I, I am sorry i i have to relate crime to a, a level uh how to put this boy i i have to relate crime to something that is not of an honest man's doing no honest man will go and kill and steal and rob from another man so I, i'm sorry sasha i have to disagree i have to disagree with that part there but yes we need to invest more in our country in every single sector no yes back to our judiciary night court why can't they be functioning 24 hours a day seven days a week our country systems need to wake the hell up because i am telling you our systems cannot be asleep to the detriment of the country our systems must be awake and fully running so our country can sleep at night our systems must be so efficient that we can be able to run 24 hours a day and 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 get things done while our nation citizens can sleep comfortably and not lose a minute on our sleep thinking about what can go wrong and how they may be injured in the process uh, no, a lot of times I see, and again I see it again with the Minister of National Security about the state of emergency and targeting hotspot areas. <sighs> hotspot areas. Cool them down if they're hot. And how are you going to cool them down? It's about time Trinidad shows the rogue elements who is boss and who actually can't get shit done. Criminals do not we respond to criminals in a manner of oh gosh the criminals say this and they're going to do this so we respond in fear why do we respond in fear we as trinidadians the government should never kneel or bow to the rogue element now it is hard to say that when most of our leaders may be rogue elements i just wanted to put that out there in this time of national duress and I'm going to say this again. The rights of the few must be trampled over for the rights of the many. And for those who want to protect the rights of criminals, yes, there are people too. If you are people and you want to be protected and you, you want your rights to not be infringed, then do not do what is wrong. You do what is wrong, you will be treated accordingly. And for Christ's sake, we are not an island that just attracts scum because recently we have hundreds of migrants well immigrants being posted back who was originally from Trinidad do we have a registry of foreign offenders 
So when these individuals come back and come into our country, who, who nationality, area of origin was Trinidad, has gone all over the world, commit acts of violence, commit acts of terrorism, and they're posted back to Trinidad, do we have a check on that? Do we know who these individuals are? Are alerts sent out to, in, to individuals in the area when, when these individuals move into the areas? Of course not. Because why? Because we have our tan plan, we have our crime plan that working so great and so overwhelmingly fine that we don't need to do that. We need to start allowing extradition of cases. I am sorry, but the Attorney General's office need to stop blocking all these extradition orders and all these extradition cases coming in. And most times it is not with the little man on the corner that going to be extradited. It is the big guns that will be extradited. They need to start allowing it and stop allowing party financers to influence the course of justice. We need accountability and we need transparency and that is that is exactly what it is. And to do this, we need people who are willing to to roll their sleeves up and say, listen, we have to get this done and it is going to get done. We need to stop criticizing everything for the sake of criticism. A lot of people stand out there and they talk and they talk and they talk and, talk and my God, it is exhausting. And at the end of the day, you go right back home to the issue at hand. So what's all this talking about? Now, there's a famous quote that always resonated with me. And I think it would put our country's position into perspective. It was, uh, for those of you who saw the, this movie, this recent movie with Winston Churchill, he said there's no reasoning with a tiger when your, head's, when your head is in its mouth. And that is exactly the position that Trinidad is in right now. How can you reason and rationalize what is going on in our community uh, with all this crime going on? You think criminals care to rationalize and reason? It, it takes a real man or a real woman not to pull a trigger on a firearm, for those of you who didn't know. It takes a little boy to pull a trigger on a firearm, but a real man is aware of his consequences relating to pulling that trigger. And that is where decision, decisions are made, that is where strength comes from, the ability not to do something. And that t takes me to my point with firearms, the right to bear arms. I believe every single citizen that is not convicted of a crime, serious crimes that is, should have the right to bear a firearm. Yes, a lot of people would say that yes, yeah, it's dangerous and it's not good and look at the US and look at all the school shootings they have going on and etc etc. Yes, guns kill people, cars kill people, water kills people, salt kills people. But does that mean is the car's fault? Does that mean is the water's fault? Does that mean is the salt fault? Is it the gun fault? No. The gun cannot wake up a morning and decide, I'm going to kill this man. Obviously not. When individuals apply for their permit, they would be subjected to proper gun care and handling. A lot of individual individuals who have never been around firearms and don't understand firearms will have a fear towards it or have a, a jaded uh, perspective or stigma towards it. However, firearms are actually something I believe everyone at least once in their life should have the opportunity to attend a class and have a proper training on what a firearm really is, how it is constituted and it removes a lot of fear and a lot of stigma away from firearms. Uh, on top of which you would realize when you actually hold that gun in your hand for the first time on fire it is no longer a game you look at videos online and you and i've seen some terrible videos on facebook with uh casinos being shut up and you would see okay these guys sending off five ten rounds how much of a rounds they have in their clip and it looks as something you just as a video yes it's horrendous but you do not truly understand the the mental capacity of an individual to pull a trigger 10 times on our body. That is a different mindset. We need more development and mental reformation. And this ties back into our criminal problem. This ties back in into our suicide problem. This ties into our youths. This ties into our economy. This ties into every single sector in Trinidad. 
mental development and health and of recently everybody's on this big campaign because two two um two popular individuals passed away because of um depression or, or whatever the case may be it doesn't mean because popular people are affected by it that the normal public joe public isn't affected by it you know people everyone is affected by our minds and until we start placing emphasis on our mental health and our mental stability nothing can be done all these plans we have for crime and all these plans we have to to make our communities better and education why are students in the sca level so frustrated because why you have to attend classes before school you have school you have classes after school and probably classes after classes and then have to rinse and repeat for months Mental stability is the basis on which our society stands and until we as people understand that until we are mentally sound and secure, nothing is going to change. And this attitude that Trinidadians have of persecuting someone and of, of trying to look down at someone or make fun of somebody because they have a different perception on something or they have a different idea towards something is absolutely ridiculous. No, I always say there's no such thing as a stupid idea. A lot of people prove me wrong on that a lot of times, but you know, let's not go there. Um, on honestly, we need people to come out and say, "Listen, I uh, I have a, a problem. I am affected by this. I um I do think that I suffer from depression." We need people. We need to start destigmatizing what it is that is going on. It is no longer something to be frowned upon, you know. It is something that if an individual comes to you as a, just as a person, a random stranger comes to you and say, listen, I, I really don't think I can handle this and, you know, I don't know what to do. It is your duty as a person, not as a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago, not as a, a, a citizen of wherever. It is your duty as a person, as a human being, to take care of that individual to an extent obviously you'll try your best to help but do not just shrug your shoulders and be like oh well i have my own shit you know so you how to handle your stories do not do it it takes a few seconds and a few words out of your day to entirely change someone's life a lot of times people lives are changed for the worse because somebody said some stupidness in the wrong time be very aware of how and what you say to people guys and this is somebody re this is somebody problems affecting our youths as well they are not being guided they are not being helped they are not being educated they are not being informed no yeah you would say okay you have education and you are going to school education through school is in my opinion read and repeat read and regurgitate it doesn't prepare you for real life it doesn't help you in life lessons at all and it really doesn't do anything much outside of passing your exams now that being said m fixing our mental development and fixing our mental forty it's not gonna happen overnight it is definitely not going to happen overnight and we have a lot of issues that relate to mental development we are enslaved by tribal politics we are enslaved by tribal politics and tribal politics promotes division divide and conquer and to divide and conquer what can they divide and conquer us on they divide and conquer us on race and religion now i am quite aware and i am quite sure that if you stab an individual of East Indian descent, of uh, Afro Trinidadian, of Chinese, Japanese, white, whatever, we all bleed. I don't care if you're Hindu, Muslim, Christian, a Baha'i, it doesn't matter. You feel, you hurt, you die just as everyone else. Stop letting tribal politics affect the decision making process in Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidadians also need to become more aware of what is going on on a worldly basis. 
on an international basis we do not exist in a vacuum people we exist as part of a lar larger organization a larger world we are just a dot on the map that you can barely see on a map to begin with we need to stop acting like we are the kings and queens of the world we are not we need to understand that to grow we need to understand and accept where our problems are and until we accept where our problems are we cannot grow we need to stop thinking that we know what's best and we feel we reach we need foreign influence in our country and i am at the point that we should probably beg for it too because we need it to survive we need it to sustain and we need it to grow we need it to develop why is it that every opportunity for foreign influence to come into the country and for foreign development to come into the country the citizens and the one percent block it and you know what's the funny part about it the one percent will block it yes but the citizens will support the one percent because why recently uber left trinidad because of lack of uh lack of infrastructure for lack of for there for better word how can a first world country come to us and we do everything in our power to stop it everything in our power to stop it because you know why we want to go back we want to go back to the times of the donkey cart and we want to go back to the times of box cart because why we only want to grow in areas that are not that are not important. We want to grow with the party and we want to grow with the linemen. We want to grow with the living it up with the Joneses. We want to grow with wearing the best shirt and all that kind of thing. But you need to understand the society as a whole needs to grow together. You can't just take the fun parts out of it, you know. Yeah, we're a drink and lime country and a jam and wine country. But you can't just grow in jam and wine alone. You need to regulate certain things in the country. We need to diversify. As an oil and natural gas country. Why are we still only in oil and natural gas? We have so many resources in our country. For a small speck in the globe. We are one of the most bountiful and fruitful countries you can find. And what do we do with it? We piss it all away. We only care about providing asphalt to some airport in China for their runway. Or we only care about... What fed coming soon? All these things are the reasons why Trinidad is in the place it is in right now. Because no one wants to stand up and say, well, you know, that's right. And no one wants to say that they are wrong. Every one of us, including myself, is wrong and contributed to where Trinidad is today. Because if I had stand up earlier, and if you had stand up earlier, and made a difference and said something, then we could have been a lot different from where we are today but no we sit down we stay quiet and we bitch and moan to each other in a corner and express on how frustrated we are and expect things to change the true definition of madness is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different outcome it, it is it is saddening but again I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you guys again, I started the petition to remove the Minister of National Security, I believe a week ago, two weeks ago, it's a bit hazy, I started the petition, 72 people out of a thousand and something views signed it, 72 people, how are you going to complain and you say you're fed up with the country and you're fed up with the crime, but you refuse to do something to help, that's not making any sense to me. You can take the signatures from this petition, send it to the parliament, allow it to be voted and supported on, try and make a difference, even if it doesn't go through the entire process, at least you try, at least the views of the public is heard, the majority will be heard, and people need to understand in Trinidad and Tobago. Public pressure is the most important tool that we have. Watch how fast. Daryl Smith was removed from office. I don't think he even got to sit on the chair properly. He was removed. And why is that? Public pressure. People need to understand. Your vote matters and your vote counts. And those who tell me that they don't vote. 
You need to understand that the power you hold in that one finger, you can make a difference. If every individual decides to boycott our, our, to boycott our institutions for a day, two days, three days, the country will collapse. And we need it, to be quite honest, we need it. So for all you guys who logged in, what are some issues you think that's bothering you guys? Um, for those who logged in late, we were talking about national security and how we could change things to fix this national security problem, to fix our crime problem. What, what, what do you think we could do on our drug control? I think we need to stop, we just need to stop focusing on the little small man on the block who's selling our joint. Because he's buying it from somewhere, right? Supply and demand. So it's not the little small man you need to focus on. You need to focus on the Mr. Big. The one who, the big conglomerate who's supplying these people. Or the Mrs. Big. You never know Mr. Mr. Man inside it. Or Mr. Big. I think it was Mr. Big he said. But it could possibly be a Mrs. Big as well. Right? We label gangs uh, as community leaders what absurdity what why are why do we glorify this bad boy person and this bad boy image why do we glorify gangs we give them and we fuel them to do what they do do, do and this this boils down to our reporting as well our news reporters need to be very careful in how they report things because they glorify all the bad things that happen and they barely touch on what needs to be touched on. I absolutely, don't get me wrong, I love to read the papers, I love the feel of the papers in my hand, but I absolutely hate the style of reporting. It is ridiculous, because why? I feel like I read in a storybook where you're telling me about it's okay to do crime, and it's okay, and criminals have rights, and this, it doesn't make any sense. We need to change the style of reporting, China and Tobago. All the news reporters, the news anchors, radio announcers, if you're watching this, please, this is not a condemnation of you guys. I know a lot of you try really hard. Please change your style of reporting. Stop glorifying all the wrong things and start placing emphasis on the right things. Instead of saying, well, I have so much examples here, this is absolutely ridiculous. Is your opinion on implementing capital punishment? To be honest, um, I have differing views, Christian, on capital punishment. I do not think we need to go back to the mentality of cracking a whip for someone to listen to that old slavery mindset. Um, I mean, I do stand in support of it. It has a lot of benefits. But I would like to take a different alternative first before going back to that master slave mentality and trying a different approach trying a approach of education and knowledge and information rather than capital punishment because a lot of times yes um, the punishment is a deterrent is a physical deterrent but a lot of times people don't really need physical deterrence people just need to understand what is right and what is wrong and most times if you step out a line you may not need to be physically detailed you just need to have that mental whip being cracked to say okay listen you're not supposed to do this and you should not be doing this but i i can't stand entirely with uh capital punishment um anybody else has any questions uh, that they'd like to ask I guess as I'm here one time, I could touch on foreign affairs. As much, as much as I have the information, if you guys would like. We have foreign affairs and we have the Ministry of National, the Ministry of Energy and Energy, Energy Industries. I'll actually do Ministry of Energy. So guys, any any questions for those of you? 
who have anything you want to add hey John uh, what do you think of some of the problems that we're facing that we could we can deal with differently what what's something that's affect that affects you uh, Nisha you know what problems do you think affects us as a country how do you think that we could change some of these pro uh, uh, change and target some of these things Alright guys, so again earlier I touched on national security, things that we could do differently, things that we need to do differently. Uh, I hope it falls on your right ears to be honest. Again, I will to do your job for free. Just once the country reaches where it needs to be, a safer, better place. And to the Minister of National Security, I have nothing personal against you. It's just I think you have failed at your job and you need to step down and allow someone else to perform the duties of the office to a much more efficient and respectable level. I actually would not touch on Ministry of Energy and in Energy Industries because I will post a video on that a little later. Um, let's see. For those of you who are logged in and watching what are some things that bother you about society today? Uh, what are some things that you think should be targeted and should be focused on? I could probably address it, give you some ideas. Uh, hopefully it falls on the right ears again. I, I really hope all this information do fall on the right ears to effect change. Uh, uh, what I try to do is say the things that people don't want to say. I will tell you as it is and... I prefer telling you the truth than to lie to you. You can hate me for telling you the truth, but I will tell you what it is that is going on. All right, so another idea, another problem that was on my mind a little while ago was our Minister of Foreign Affairs. What is our Minister of Foreign Affairs really doing? Besides just holding a paid position. We have absolutely no diplomatic relations with any neighboring country, as far as I'm concerned. So what exactly is our Minister of Foreign Affairs doing? Right, we are part of CARICOM. What is CARICOM doing for us? After I did the, the research for, for um, Foreign Affairs and CARICOM, I saw the day after uh, CARICOM said that they were looking into certain things. And in my mind, how long has CARICOM existed? CARICOM is essentially a watered-down version of the European Union. And you're telling me we can't implement certain, certain stuff? And it's taken so long to implement it? Why don't we have free movement of goods, free movement of people, free movement of services and the right to establish business in any CARICOM state? What is stopping us? Now for those who don't really fully well, are fully well aware of what foreign affairs entails is the, is the government department that is responsible for the state's diplomacy and as well as providing support to our nation citizen, right? So what diplomacy do we have with our neighboring countries? Because Jamaica and Trinidad forever have a, a, a fallen out. Forever have a fallen out because recently they pulled their products off of their our products off their shelves with with just cause because we treat Jamaican individuals with such disrespect is re, is ridiculous. Honestly, guys, there's so much things that can be done so easily. And what are we doing? We just sit in idly by scratching, watching. 
With an issue that I, I, I see has been all over social media with uh, Venezuelan nationals coming across to Trinidad. What happens to, fo to foreign public policy between Trinidad and Venezuela? What is the Minister of Foreign Affairs doing to bridge that gap? Because it is your duty to work on our foreign affairs. And with a country in crisis, in such economic crisis as Venezuela, what negotiations are you having? What are you doing to aid Venezuela as well as security interests of Trinidad? Why do we not pre-screen individuals that come from Venezuela? Why, why do we not register them as tier 2 citizens coming into the country? Have a record and a database of who these individuals are, where they are located. They will not be entitled to any to access any benefits and any health care because one, we do not need a drain our economy. And two, foreign nationals coming across also opens the problem of having new diseases, uh, outbreak of certain diseases, etc. We need to we need to be aware of these things. We need to uh, understand well the other things that we need to expect that will happen. Right? Now, every foreign national that comes across from Venezuela into Trinidad and is registered as a tier 2 citizen should have a work permit automatically. I want you to work. I don't want you to steal and rob. I don't want you to murder and rape. I want you to work. There are so many jobs in Trinidad, so many menial jobs, important jobs, that these individuals will do at the blink of an eye because they are desperate. They need to support their families. They and put yourself in their shoes. As an individual, it is not your first option to leave your home country. And thinking that you have family members that you have left behind, if an individual can give you an opportunity to work and provide for your family, it should be done. So allow these immigrants work permits. Allow them to access employment. Allow them to work. And upon working, once they start working, they will pay taxes. Just as every other citizen, they're not going to be exempt, they're not going to be pardoned or cautioned, they're going to pay taxes. Hi Shivy, hope all is well. I know your wedding's coming up soon, congratulations. I'm sorry, I wouldn't be able to attend. I really wish I was there. Allow these foreign nationals to apply for low-cost housing. No, yeah, I'm going to get bashed for that because we as... As Trinidadians can't even access uh, the, the housing. But that's something that can be easily freed up. Allow these immigrants access to low cost housing. If immigrants that come into our country can, allow, can be allowed to work, can be allowed to sustain our life, can, be a, can have place to, to lay their heads at night, they're not going to steal, rob, murder, and rape. Right? Now, a lot of people blame foreign immigrants for this. As much as I am on the fence about it, you can't just judge people because they're fleeing their country. They are fleeing their country for legitimate reasons and have and had you ever been in their position, I'm guaranteed you surely do the same. Right? Allow them. We have first citizens that I believe the government has shares in. So it's a government bank. Allow foreign citizens to open bank accounts. Allow money to flow through the country. Right? So you're allowing them work permits, you're allowing them uh, access to apply for housing, you're allowing them to open bank accounts. We need foreign influence in our country. Yes, the Venezuelan dollar isn't really worth much. But again, this is where foreign talks with our failure of our Minister of, Na of uh, Foreign Affairs should come in. We should be bargaining with them. Okay, yes, we will allow your individuals into our country on the basis that we develop some benefits in Venezuela. Export Trinidadians to Venezuela. Start, start building from their economy to support ours. It doesn't take a genius to know, to know how to do that. A lot of these ideas, guys, are simple simple things that takes common sense it doesn't take no set of formal education it doesn't take a doctor or a lawyer or none of these things to fix some of these problems it just takes someone with common sense to address the issues at hand look at our medical sector it doesn't take a genius or a rocket scientist to figure out how to address these issues but nothing is being done 
right? We could allow, uh, we could allow work with these Venezuelan officials and purchase oil and gas at reduced prices from them by allowing them access into our country as as a as a bargain. Supply them with essentials like toilet paper, toothbrush, all the things that they need, things that are that they are fighting for and clamoring for. Supply these them. We have them plentiful. Right? We had uh, recently started the embargo to send containers across Venezuela. I don't know what's going on with that right now. Use a failed economy, being Venezuela economy, to shut our economy. Because we are very close to becoming a failing economy, believe it or not. And if you don't want to believe it, I believe I think you're living in something now. Establish three based businesses and help slowly rebuild not only Venezuela's economy, but also strengthen Trinidad's economy. Right? Let our businessmen, let our small businessmen, let our big businessmen go into Venezuela and start to supply what they what it is they need we would then have foreign currency coming into our country and being able to stabilize and develop our nation a lot more so there's a lot of things again i just wanted to touch on foreign affairs so this video was purely for the purposes of crime and how we can fix crime so if you guys can share it uh you know tag whoever it is you need to tag that needs to see this video and let's actually make something happen for once and not just beat around the bush not just talk and just do let's just do something so any of you guys who have ideas any of you guys who want to be a part of the process and be a part of the plan let me know um those of you who want to make a difference feel free to hit me up anytime i am not an individual that will ever turn anyone away who wants to make a difference so thanks for listening guys